Hey, hi, hello guys, my name is Mia Marie and you are currently watching my Sinistry compatibility series where I go through all the 12 signs, sun signs, and how they get along. Now, as a general disclaimer, we reference so much more than just the sun sign for compatibility, but the importance of the sun and understanding someone's sun sign and accepting it and supporting it is that the sun sign describes the motives, the behaviors, the experiences that contribute to someone's sense of sanity. So we're not talking so much about what someone needs emotionally or how they flirt or what makes them great in bed, all of those very, you know, romantic uh, topics, we're talking about how to support someone's vitality, someone's sense of self, and someone's healing human journey. So keep in mind that this is just a gentle introduction, and you can get so much more by booking a session with me or another fantastic astrologer. I hope you enjoy. Someone who is born with the sun in Leo has come to earth to self-actualize and self-realize. All of their behaviors, their thoughts, their failures, their successes, everything is in effort to accomplish that mission. Who am I? What is my real personality? What can I do to get the applause and the attention that I deserve? They take, being the second fire sign, they take the identity that Aries has established and they create a personality that they market and then they perform it. Now, Leo always runs the risk of adjusting themselves and their tone to get the standing ovation. But what ends up happening is as they're trying on all these different faces and they're getting approval, they still don't feel like they're being seen and valued and appreciated. And so it can create some dissonance in their younger years. As they get older, they have to practice a different type of strength. Aries is physical strength. Leo is mental strength, committing to staying with oneself, developing one's skills, paying attention to their urge and desire for creativity. It's a very creative sign. It's represented by the sun and the sun is what gives everything on earth life. It is vitality. And so their sanity is closely tied with their ability to create something or perform something or even try to children. Leos are generally speaking really good with children because again, going back to that wound around joy and being appreciated, they know what a child needs innately to thrive. And so they will often be the number one supporter of a child in whatever endeavor that they choose. They show up, you know, with the signs or they're the coach or in, in, in any way that they can, they make sure that that child feels the same validation that they expect in their own partnerships and in life. And in fact, it's really good for the spirit, especially if a Leo is kind of feeling down and out for them to be around kids because it allows their inner child to come out and play. It immediately reconnects them with joy. Children remind them about the lighter side, about the importance of creativity and the importance of engaging, say like with a team. Now with fire signs, again, we're continuing the theme of leadership. So Leos often find themselves in positions of authority and power, and they tend to do pretty well because they carry this nobility, this responsibility to please the crowd, to do what's best for everybody. But Leo is different than say Aries because it's a fixed sign, which means that it can be quite stubborn. Once it's made up its mind, once it's committed to something, it can be kind of hard like Taurus, Scorpio, Aquarius, it can be hard for them to switch directions. They don't like unexpected information. They don't like the plans changing, especially if they're not the ones who initiated it. And they can also be fiercely loyal and protective over the people that they love, kind of like the lion being the king of the jungle. They use their energy and their vitality, of course, to have fun and throw parties and celebrate life, but they will also protect life. <laughs> they're, they're very scary. They have a, a, a hot temper once pushed. But that fixed quality can often lead Leo, I've seen, it can lead them to stay in places longer than they need to. Like so long as they're getting some kind of recognition or approval, if they're getting something out of the transaction, then they will stay in the relationship or they'll stay in the job, even though it's not something that they really like or find fulfilling, something that is completely devoid of creativity, for example. As I briefly mentioned earlier, Leo is a socially oriented sign, which means that when it looks out into the world, it's never just thinking about itself. It's thinking about everybody else too. And they often get irked 
when they're around people who only think about themselves. Like for example, I have a lot of Aries energy in my chart and my cousin has a lot of Leo. And one of her biggest complaints to me is like, it's not all about you. <laughs> and they'll feel that way towards Aries, Taurus, Gemini. They have the clan mentality of Cancer where there's a group of people that they are quite comfortable with, that they act as a protector over, but they, they need groups of people to stay stimulated and to stay engaged. They're not a lone soldier. You, you can't, you, Leos don't wanna be alone. Some deal breakers for Leo. So as I said, they're here to reestablish the relationship with joy and they're a socially oriented sign. So they judge themselves by how people receive them and how they sparkle in the eyes of others. So if they've worked, say for example, really hard on a creative project and they present it to you and you dismiss them over and over again, if you're someone who's tapped out, if you're someone who is not ever giving, if, if you're not a cheerleader for them, then eventually they're gonna get tired of being let down because what happens is it stimulates that wound from childhood that they're not doing enough, that they are not worthy enough. Now, they're not gonna think about it that way. All they're gonna know is that it hurts and it doesn't feel good, and they're gonna start going to somebody else for attention because it's not just to like, oh my God, you know, you, you need attention. It's like, no, that attention means something and it means something about me to me, and it validates who I am and my personality. So it's not a surface level thing for a Leo. Being acknowledged, being celebrated by someone that they value helps them heal that wound around creativity and it allows them to show up authentically in life. Not that they should always rely on that, but they shouldn't have a partner who doesn't appreciate their creative efforts. Another thing they don't appreciate is if you're a Debbie Downer, if you're overly emotional, if you are bringing down the vibe, you know, like the sun every morning, they like to rise, they like to grow, and they like to see that their energy is bringing life and inspiration and motivation and activation to the people around them. So if you're unmotivated, and if you are just sitting here swirling in your head about all these different things and you're never in the present moment, they're not gonna like that either. Leos tend to do a lot and they do it big. They think that life is one giant act, one giant performance. We're thinking like Jennifer Lopez vibes. And so having a partner who is intimidated or turned off by that type of lifestyle and tells them to play smaller or speak a little lower or to just calm down is not the right person. It's gonna kill their pilot light. It's going to depress their energy, their vitality in the long run. Leos are also very prideful. They take pride in what they do, they take pride in who they are, and they take pride in their relationship. So if you're someone who goes out into the world and makes a fool of yourself, if you are a public nuisance, if you embarrass them in any way, they're gonna wanna create distance from you and they may even leave the relationship because you are an extension of them in your eyes and they expect that you will live up to their expectations. And they will also make sure that when they show up to your events, that they are, are a reflection of you and they bring them best, their, their best selves to the table. Someone who was born with their son in Pisces has a soul that came to this earth to break down all barriers that stand in the way of oneness. Now, Pisces has a reputation of not having boundaries or lacking boundaries or having porous boundaries. And when you hold in mind what their goal is, it kind of makes sense that it's hard for them to throw up that wall because it flies in the face of what they stand for. They want to bring love and unity to everything. It's a very gentle, loving, accepting soul and energy. Now, this doesn't mean they don't need boundaries, but it means that there's going to be resistance towards them. Once you explain to a Pisces that boundaries exist to protect them and to shield them, it can act as a barrier between people's energy and them. Then they'll be a little bit more on board with the program. Pisces is ruled by two planets, traditionally Jupiter and modern day says Neptune. So you will find two different types of Pisces characters. A Jupiterian Pisces, it has a similar energy to Sagittarius where they're expansive and big and larger than life, but it's via their emotions. And they are a little bit more positive than what you would expect. They wanna play, they wanna have fun. The other Neptunian Pisces, 
is more introverted the first one is extroverted this one is introverted it, it wants to look on the inner world not the outer world and it wants to expand there and there is they're a little bit more reserved they're focused on like their artwork behind closed doors and their poetry and the ways in which they love themselves it it's kind of like they take that same energy that sagittarius would in the external world and they project it in their home space, in their private life. And with Neptune Pisces, you often see someone who has almost Capricornian expressions where they fall prey to depression because they get stuck in themselves. They get stuck in their own stories and the depression manifests. And when depression shows up in someone's life, it's the soul saying like, I don't want to play this role anymore. I don't want to be involved in this life anymore. And at that point, when you have that awareness, then Pisces can adjust their schedule and use their energy in different ways to erase the depression that they're currently managing. So keep that in mind. Which type of Pisces do you have? A Jupiterian Pisces or a Neptunian? Pisces is a water sign. It's the eldest water sign, but it's also the most sensitive and the most vulnerable. And the easiest way I can explain it is by the symbol for Pisces. It's a fish. A fish has no protective layer. It goes with the flow. It has no choice unless it's swimming upstream, exhausting itself, trying to fight the flow of life. But Scorpio has that stinger. Cancer has the crab shells and those little crabby hands to protect itself. Pisces is out in the open. It is the depository for the collective emotion. Now, they're not going to think about it that way. You're not going to think about it that way. In fact, a lot of what they're processing isn't something that's directly happened to them. Oftentimes, you'll find that when a Pisces is weighed down or they're feeling a strange mood for a reason that they can't explain, it's because of something that's happening out in the world. Now, when this happens, it's important that Pisces meditates because that is the safest, healthiest way for them to process their emotions. The alternative is that they're paying attention so closely to what's happening. They're paying attention to the mood, the vibes, the smells, the way that you're carrying yourself. They're paying attention to all the things that you aren't saying and try to integrate what you are saying. And it creates this glazed over look as if they're daydreaming. But really, they're collecting so much information that you are not even willingly communicating to them. Now, when this happens, it can create a feeling of overwhelm and they need to leave the room. They are an introverted sign, specifically just sun and Pisces is an introverted sign. And so what it will do in those instances is it will literally escape the room, but then once it's in its own room, it will either meditate and process the emotion or it will escape through some kind of substance. So smoking, drinking, being on the computer for hours on end, watching TV mindlessly to the point where they're getting lost though. And so you can create this habit of constant escapism to the point where you're never really rooted or grounded. And so when I say meditation for Pisces, I don't mean, you know, doing yoga, your fingers are like this, you're like, mm, in yoga pants, so religious about your practice. That works too. But what I'm saying is you need to bring yourself into a brain state where you can close the door, sit with yourself and just feel and rinse. It's this internal process of you letting the waters that don't belong to you just whoosh, go right off your body. So Pisces are mystics. They're mild, right? They go with the flow. Now, because Pisces is a mutable sign, and this is true for all mutable signs, it's equally as important to look at where the sun is placed, like which house it's placed in, because the house will greatly affect this changeable energy. It will give it a more concrete flavor. But just purely Pisces energy is kind of a let go and let God type attitude. And what they're here to do is to develop a relationship with spirit. It could be religious, it could be spiritual, it could be whatever it is, but they are constantly striving to meet, to reach spiritual enlightenment. And the way they do that is by taking care of their body, taking care of themselves, but arriving to that space where they can prioritize themselves and their health before others. It's a journey. So this is someone who in relationships is willing to make the sacrifices to show up. They are caring, they're empathetic, they are good with emotions, they can sit with you when you are expressing, like they can see the most terrible behavior and not judge you because they see through to what you are made of, what your soul is. 
and how much you're struggling. And so Pisces can find themselves in situations with people who are dangerous or the bad boy. And they have this kind of phenomenon. This is true with Pisces men too, where they like the damsel in distress. They like saving somebody. And with women, you know, it's like, well, you know, if I just show up in this way and if I just do this, if I just do this and they'll change and then the bad boy will be saved. The men are like, here's this damsel in distress. I'm going to help her because she needs me. And so that language can exist with a uh, relationship with the sun in Pisces. So being the eldest water sign, they have the qualities and strengths of Cancer and Scorpio, but they're not focused on themselves. They're not specifically focused on one-on-one -on -one relationships. They're focused on humanity, the universe, the ethers. They're going as, as large and as big as you can imagine. They're leaving this plane in so many different ways. And so some deal breakers for a Pisces character is if you judge or if you try and stand in the way of their spiritual development. Now, I said earlier that they are sacrificing when it comes to relationships. This is not one of those areas where they're going to be sacrificing. A developed Pisces, if you are standing in the way of their spiritual journey, they will cut you off because that is that is what gives them fuel. That's what keeps them sane. And so if you're not supportive of whatever philosophy, astrology, you know, right before you, hello, <laughs> they're going to be turned off. They're going to think you're closed-minded and they will feel unaccepted. And what makes that even worse is that they are so accepting that when it's not mirrored back to them, it makes it easier for them to step away. Another thing they don't like is if you're disrespectful to other people or if you treat other people poorly, um, specifically people who don't have the same resources that you have. So if you're rude to marginalized groups of people or if you treat homeless people poorly or as if they're less than, they don't see or they don't, I mean, they see it, but they don't subscribe to like the hierarchy that people are better than others. In their mind, everyone is the same. They're not going to bow to someone because of a specific title. They understand that when you walk out of your workplace, you guys are just humans face to face. And so if you insist that they take on the beliefs and that you subscribe to what the rest of society is doing, they're also going to turn away from you. And similar to that, if you are someone who lives and dies by your schedule, if you just do to do, if you want your day booked from the, the moment you wake up until the moment you go to sleep, Pisces is going to be repulsed by you in some way, shape, and form because you're not taking care of yourself. There is no spiritual life there. You're just functioning to function and you're forgetting to live and to exist. And Pisces needs the flexibility in a schedule uh, in in their day to go with the flow because their feelings change. Sometimes inspiration hits them at the most spontaneous time. And if you are like, no, you said you would be here and we have to do this and this and this and this, they're going to feel as if their creativity is being squandered. Like you're taking away something quite precious and it is precious for them. It's kind of hard to tell when you have reached a deal breaker with Pisces because they're not so confrontational, specifically just sun and Pisces, all other aspects ignored. They're not confrontational in that way. They don't want to feel uncomfortable. It's more of like a silent, ah, I got it. This is who you are. These are the decisions that you make. And they will just not make time for you or they won't show up or they'll cancel last minute. It's... They show that they care with their presence. And so if they continuously reject your opportunity or your bid for attention, it's either that they are avoiding reality in general because they're dealing with something privately that they're probably not explaining to you, or you've just kind of left a sour taste in their mouth and they don't want to spend time with you. But overall, Pisces are really sweet, accepting lovers. And the gift that they bring to you is some kind of like spiritual awakening or some invitation to go higher, to elevate, to escape this reality that is so prominent and overwhelming. I will say, two fish, opposite directions, Pisces are known, similar to Gemini, they're known to have multiple marriages <laughs> because they just change quite frequently. And... There is this fickle quality and emotional instability, kind of like the ocean, you know, always changing in and out, in and out. <laughs> there is this quality to them, but 
That aside, it's not a reflection of you. That aside, when they are there and when they are with you, they, they want to gift you with whatever they have. That's just the way they are. Pisces and Leo. I will say as it relates to Pisces compatibility with the fire signs, this is where we find the most heat in the kitchen. Like it, it gets too hot where we have to step out sometimes. And the reason why this happens is because Leo is a socially oriented sign, which means that it wants to live life with somebody. It wants someone to come with them to the party. It wants someone to come with them to their show, their performance, their ceremony. They need their cheerleader beside them. They want that validation, that attention, that affirmation, that applause from their partner. But Pisces is a universally oriented sign. And so it will do that in the beginning. But what happens is Pisces can feel they can feel as if they are sacrificing the greater work to celebrate their partner's personality. And that's hard for Pisces to swallow because they're thinking about humanity. They're thinking about the quality of life of people who are homeless or you know who, who have much harder conditions than their partner dancing on stage, putting on a performance or wanting to throw a party. Pisces is here to serve. And so this can create an interesting dynamic between the two. And that's why it's really important to keep in mind that for Leo, their sanity hinges on you showing up that way and you supporting that. The worst thing that you can do is agree to be in partnership with a Leo and then play the villain or play the opponent or not acknowledge them because it re-triggers that wound of, I'm not valuable, I'm not worthy of my parents say attention. Pisces has to promise to validate Leo and stimulate their creativity and make an effort to show up when they can. And Leo has to also recognize that Pisces is a water sign. It is not, it does not need to be in motion all the time. It doesn't need to be doing things. It's not like fire where it's constantly having to burn something or it will burn itself out, right? That's why Leo has to stay in motion. It has to burn something or it's gonna hurt itself. It's going to set itself on fire. Pisces isn't that way. For Pisces, when they're going out of your way, when they're leaving the house, when they are applauding, they are draining their emotional reservoir. And it has nothing to do with how little or how much they love you. They love you, hopefully. <laughs> but it's, you guys are operating from different things. You're fueled by different things. Pisces fills up by being inside, by focusing on something that is, emotionally fulfilling. They care about emotions. They care about the quality of people's lives. They, they care about mental health. Um, and so you'll see that they typically want to stay inside the house unless they have other fire placements. It would be helpful for this couple to like renew their vows to each other or to, you know, recircle around the conversation about what they need and, and what they're available to provide to their partner um, because I, I can't see it being troublesome. But enough about that. Let's focus on the ways in which they balance each other and help each other out. So Pisces can get lost in their head. They're daydreamers, they get overly emotional, they're emotionally unstable from time to time. And Leo is really good at recognizing when something doesn't feel good. And so usually they are truthful or a little blunt and they will tell Pisces directly what's wrong. You know, you're being, overly sensitive, you're not thinking clearly, you need to like re-examine what your plan is because there are gaps missing or you're not considering others or your ideals are way too high. Leo is very quick to humble Pisces. And when Pisces takes that information, it allows them to reconnect with their humanity. And then also Leo encourages Pisces to have an ego, to focus on self because Pisces is so other oriented, it stretches beyond their family. They're focused on the world, bigger things, and they can lose sight of things that matter, like their family, like their partner, like their pets, like joy. And so Leo is like, hey, you know, uh, these things make life rich. These things make your life worth living. And so Pisces benefits from that. And when Pisces has committed to consciously pay attention to their partner, they are able to meet pretty much all of Leo's needs. Leo has big aspirations for themselves, right? They are like the kings of the jungle, represented by the lion. 
They, they have big goals for themselves and they will need a partner in crime. That is what makes Leo unique out of the fire family. Sagittarius doesn't, Aries doesn't, Leo does. And so Pisces has the creativity and the flexibility and the imagination and the commitment also to show up for Leo and help Leo see their dreams through. In fact, when Pisces is present in the moment, when Pisces is involved actively in a Leo's life, their applause is the loudest. Another way that these two connect, another area of life where they connect is they like to throw parties. They like to celebrate. Leo will probably want to do it more frequently than the Pisces, but they like to have a good time. They like good food and good music and good company. They like to pull people together to, you know, for Pisces, it's to establish unity and a sense of connectedness. For Leo, it's to put on a performance or just to engage and to see what everyone is doing. You know, they're, they're socially nosy sometimes. <laughs> and so these two know how to throw a party. What I will say is that this is a relationship that is never dull. These two are always challenging each other to step outside of their comfort zone and do something for the benefit of somebody else. It can definitely work, but it does require a lot of communication and compromise.